All right, so no, no dominating answer here. Two of them vying for, for the lead are, are, are closely related to each other. Force by wheels on road, force by road on wheels. Um, I'm, I'm probably going to give you either of those two answers, C or D. But, but let me say something. If you look at this, delta P of some object, so I'm going to look at this equation. What is this thing telling you? Delta P, the change in momentum of some object, depends on forces on that object by something else outside, and it depends on the time over which it interacts. So if I want to know delta P for the car, what's pushing the car forward, I would look for forces that say force on car. D is the one that says force by road on the wheels. The wheels are just a name for a part of the car. That's a force on the car. As I said, the wheels are part of the car, the engine's part of the car. If you buy a car and it doesn't have an engine, you're going to feel cheated. If you buy a car and it doesn't have wheels, same thing. All those things are part of the car. And I'd like you to think of them as part of the car. So something else has to be pushing the car forward. And the something else that does it is the road. Um, the, engine, the engine does a lot of stuff, but it's all internal. The engine's part of the car. The engine causes the wheels to spin. That's what the engine actually does. The engine causes the wheels to turn. Does something tricky, it's got linkages, so the, the wheels turn. What happens when the wheels turn? Depends on where the car is. What if I put the car up on a, on a jack so the wheels are just free to move? Then the wheels turn, the engine works, the wheels turn, and the car doesn't go anywhere. The only reason the car goes somewhere is because the wheels are in contact with the road and they don't slip. Because they don't slip, it means there's a friction force that's pushing and stopping the wheels from slipping. It's a friction force by the road that pushes the car forward. I didn't expect you to come up with friction force necessarily, but force on the wheels is a force on the car, and this is the only one, D is the only one that's a force on the car and comes from something outside the car. And if you don't think that the friction force by the road is the thing accelerating the car forward, pushing the car forward, uh, try, to, try to take off from a, from a halt on, when your wheels are sitting on a, a wet and oily patch. Uh, you, you, the engine works, your foot works, it hits the gas pedal, the engine works, the wheels spin, everything is great, but because of the lack of friction with the road, your wheels just spin and you don't really go anywhere. So the idea there that I wanted to get across is that it takes something from the outside to, to put a force on something and change its momentum. Something has to, be, it has to interact from the outside. Like saying, how do I increase the, the thermal energy of this, this table? Well, I have to interact with it from the outside. There. My hand is from the outside. My hand is interacting with it. My hand is hotter than the table, so I can transfer heat from my hand. But it has to come from the outside somewhere. You can't transfer heat from the inside into the inside. You can change energies around inside. You can increase thermal energy by decreasing some other energy. Energy comes in all sorts of different kinds, so that's a little different than momentum. I only have one kind of momentum. If I want my momentum to change, I have to get that momentum change from something else. Any questions on that one? You've talked about collisions a lot. I don't want to I don't want to belabor this. I'm just going to say, because collisions happen quickly, so delta t is small, 
The forces between two objects when they're colliding are always the most important thing around. And any other forces that might be present are usually ignorable. And if the forces are all internal, then the total momentum of the two objects colliding has to be, has to be constant. So you've used that idea. Sorry, the to yeah, total momentum of the two objects colliding has to be constant. So the change in momentum of the two objects has to be zero in a, in a collision. Um, this is not a collision, but it's a little like it. I'm not sure I'm going to have time for all of this, but let's do this anyway. Um, a rocket, I can pressurize it. One, two, three, four, five. And then release it. Well, that was fun. Or I can put a little water in it, just a little bit, and then pressurize it the same amount and release it. So I'd like you to think about the difference between air shooting out of the rocket and water shooting out of the rocket. You can put water and air in at this in and letting the air out shoot, the water shoot out the bottom. The air shoots out, you could calculate this, but it's, a, it's about 30 times faster. The air comes out faster than the water. And I'll remind you that momentum depends on mass and velocity. So you'll have to think of both mass and velocity. And tell me which of these statements is correct. <laughs>